Hello everyone and welcome to the 2022 Memorial Championship presented by Discraft. We're here for the fourth and final round of the MPO action taking place at the Vista del Camino Park. I'm riding solo on the commentary, so I make no promises other than maybe a few bad jokes. Well, and, you know, some instructions for how you could win stuff. So maybe those cancel each other out. We're here on hole one, 285 feet. Pretty straight shot to a somewhat elevated pin. In fact, I think this is one of the straightest holes that we'll find here on the course. You must navigate through the triple mandatory. It's located about 100 feet off the tee. And Macbeth, low and in control. Looks like a buzz to inside the circle. Here's Anthony Barella. Also low and in control. Both of these players with errant tee shots in round number three, so making great corrections right off the bat. Hamas knows how to play it. He's currently CTP. Hamas starting off four strokes behind Paul Macbeth, two behind Barella. One stroke advantage over this guy, Aaron Gossage who sits at 27 under. Buckle up, we might have some fireworks here this round. We've got four great drives, exactly what we would expect. Farthest from the pin is Macbeth and he's inside 25 feet. Through 55 holes of play now. Macbeth, 33 under par. Came out with the scorching 16 under. Followed that up, I believe, with a 12 under. Both taking place out at Fountain Hills. Struggled a little bit here during the third round. Only shot four under. And well, Aaron was making his move during the third round. Just like that, we've got a star frame to get things started. We head over to hole two, 113 meters. It's a par three. Most common play is something low off to the right hand side. You're gonna play a skip shot that curves around both of those trees on the right. Occasionally we'll see someone with a really good forehand Go up on the left side. AB usually takes that route. You may see Hammes take that route. We've also seen the incredible forehand out of Aaron Gossage in round three. Macbeth. Well, okay. That's about as good as you could ask for. A few extra feet on the skip, but really the line you want to take if you're going with the righty backhand shot. Needs that to catch a different edge so that it would possibly skip flare to the right and it doesn't. And this is gonna have a similar result. Gets it turned over and it just doesn't fight back enough to catch the edge it needed to skip toward the pin. So all three forehands, not quite the angle required. See how aggressive Aaron wants to get with this. I guess long, long putt, short approach. I love the strategy there. A little bit of a low line drive with somewhat of a nose up and an air bounce to it. Adam, certainly a long range specialist. Yeah. 
Gorella from circle two for the birdie. And things awfully quiet around the basket, unfortunately. Macbeth hoping to change that. Right on the pole, so Macbeth will be the only player to pick up the birdie here of the card. That's going to extend his lead to three over Barella. And if you are wondering why do I recognize Aaron's last name, yes, his relative is, in fact, Goose Gossage, major league pitcher, back when I was a kid. I'm just a kid at heart. Here we go. I mean, you see the logo of my company, my disc in a box? Come on. We're here for hole three, 360 feet. I'm going to say it plays very similar to hole two. You can go with a hyzer shot on the right side. You want it to come in short and skip to the pin, or if you're more comfortable with the forehand shot, you play it out to the left, get it on edge, and have it skip to the right. So I feel like very similar shots. Macbeth going a little bit higher than the previous hole. And about the same result. That's inside the circle. Here on three, AB less than a meter from the pin. Needs to skip straight and or get a little bit of a roll. A slight angle for the downhill putt to this elevated pin. Saturday's play was definitely windier, maybe a little bit warmer. Today there's a slight chill in the air, temperatures in the mid to low 60s. And what a contrast from the previous hole where all three forehands didn't get there and now we got three forehands that are closest compared to this guy, Macbeth, trying to pick up his third birdie in a row. He's got the Frozen soundtrack stuck in his head already. I think we'll see a, an exact reversal if Aaron can convert here. A reverse of what we just saw on hole number two. Okay, spoke too soon. Sizable gallery out here taking in the action live again a Sunday afternoon. You can't beat early March weather in Arizona. So many competitors, international competitors. Great place to be for the 34th annual event. I'm Garrett Gerthy. People know me as Double G. I've been making Double G Craft Jerky since I was 16 years old. And while Wakona and I are driving, don't have time to stop and eat, so I always have her grab me a small bag of Double G Jerky. You got Smash Crack Pepper on Tuesday, you can Wednesday you got the garlic. Late in the round, you know, hole 14, you might need a little pick-me-up, pull out some Double G Jerky. Grab the big bag because you're going to have to share. You can find Double G Craft Jerky at DoubleGJerky.com. Pull four, 381 feet. This one 
really gives you pretty much two options. Either you go with a slight hyzer or you go with the wide hyzer if you're the righty backhand. You play it out around the pine tree on the right side. There is OB to the left, to the right, and deep of the pin. And that's the tree I speak of that most of our players will want to go around perfectly executed. And from back at the tee pad, <laughs> that looked very close to going in, as you can see. Came in deep, but a really good line. The number one mistake people make is not hanging it out wide enough, and they catch that tree, and that's exactly what we see from Hamas. And to be fair, I realize that tree is in <laughs> almost the exact position in which you're trying to throw with the correct distance. We gotta hang it out wide. This needs to hook up a little bit or it could find the out of bounds. And a hesitant applause coming in from the gallery. That is wide. I think that's some next level intimidation. Looks like he's sporting a Paul McBath polo while playing against Paul McBath. And I love that move. Adam's going to have to settle for a par. Macbeth now just outside the circle, and some of you are relatively new to the game, so I, it is worth explaining since I referenced the circle so many times. That circle is 10 meters away from the basket, and if you're inside that spot, inside that circle, you cannot fall forward during a putt. If you're outside of that, you're able to. However, inside of that, you are not. And then when you go up to 66 feet, or 20 meters approximately, that is what would be considered circle two. Aaron with no problems. He picks up the birdie. AB after going deep. little light but finds the left side pocket <laughs> Macbeth will clean up for his par but noticing AB has closed the gap to just one Hamas three behind Barella then there's some other math all right, 340 feet for hole number five. There's a mandatory tree on the left that we're passing, so you have to go to the right of it, and then the tree on the right, you must go to the left of. So you, you essentially, they're forcing a tunnel shot of sorts. I say it every single time, you don't want to go deep on this pin. Those trees will absolutely impact your flight to the elevated basket if you have to make a putt from back there. And that looks pretty good, but that could be trouble. I was just speaking of those trees. If you're off center whatsoever, our cameraman's in a, in a pretty good spot there. But where AB is, I think he's going to be challenged. That needs to stop short, and it does. That's a great shot by Aaron. I think this is a buzz. Short for Hamas and Paul. Last to tee. This is also going to be a buzz by Macbeth.
Because he's short, he may have still a good look at the basket, as does Adam. Beth with some difficult reads here, not quite dialed in, and to see him not draw metal from that distance is shocking, to say the least. And AB has to take a D. Those that recall the 2021 version of this tournament. Paul Macbeth he just gets the left side and brings it in. Paul Macbeth, your champion, so he's the defending champ. However, teammate and friend Paul Uliberry was making a charge from the chase card and came up short, but certainly made things interesting in the final round. AB and Adam, of course, no strangers to performing well here in Arizona. They both have collected wins that I happen to have captured here earlier in the year. Shelly Sharp Memorial that took place at this very course. Also, the Maricopa Open took place about 35 miles south of here. Did I just plug my own channel? I think I did, yeah. I also sell shirts. Let's say DG coin on them. We're heading over to hole number six. This is a par four. It's 783 feet, and I love my guy, Zach. He offered to do some drone previews, and he wasn't as familiar with the XL layout, so he comes in on what is a shorter pin, and I continue to say that's actually still very significant, even though the hole's about 300 feet past that. That pin is, if it were in the ground right now, it's a really good spot to be. So it's a good reference point for sure. We're looking at this crush that's way past that pin though. His Aaron shot. The left hand side of this fairway then also runs parallel to hole number 14's fairway. And so if you go over into 14's fairway, you're actually considered out of bounds. And then the same of 14, when you're playing it back the opposite way, this fairway would be OB. Late hookup works out really well there for Hamas. I feel like those usually do, actually. And Macbeth also. So four really good drives. This is the first par four that they're seeing, and they're making it look very easy. If you don't have that much of a forehand. <laughs> this hole is not nearly as easy. But Macbeth with another good shot. That's going to put him inside the circle. Good birdie look. And maybe you noticed it or didn't by now, but there is a significant lack of wind out on the course right now. The players certainly taking advantage of it. It was much windier during rounds two and three at this tournament. One being at Fountain and the other round yesterday at this Dude. course. Sit. This is the worst shot ever. Mm. I disagree with you, Adam. I've seen worse shots. And <laughs> the position that Aaron was in looked like it would have been a relatively easy backhand, certainly an easy forehand with his skill set. He was so far up the fairway. That's just not a common spot to even see players be, uh, throwing from. Like 
Bath with a little more work than I even anticipated. I thought he was closer. But he'll get the birdie. That's going to bring him to three under in the front six. Barella answers with a birdie of his own, so he'll stay one behind Paul. Well, this is Adam coming back for his par. I wouldn't say that his putter's been exactly hot, so that might be a little bit of a tester, but he passes the test right in the middle of the chains. Clearly one of Adam's strengths that many of you have known about is just how good he can be from medium and long range. We'll see if he can get things going as we head over to hole number seven, which statistically usually plays as one of the easiest holes on the course at 645 feet. We saw a couple of crushes all the way to this sidewalk and beyond just yesterday we'll see if anyone can match that again plays to an elevated pin this is really a righty backhander's dream hole for a par four big crush pitch up tap it in or even a medium crush medium shot tap in it's this is pretty straightforward and <laughs> that's huge not quite as big as a shot yesterday but Certainly a great shot. There is the tree on that right in your frame there. They must go to the right of that tree. That's a mandatory, and that's really to prevent people from kind of cutting the corner, going over left and then playing up the road. Eliminated that option a few years ago with a few extra mandatories. And Aaron's drive, albeit impressive, not quite as far as the day before, that should be an easy birdie. So all four of our competitors with very basic approaches. And I swear I didn't even cheat. I just assumed that this would play as one of the easiest holes and now I'm officially confirming. Thanks to our friends over at PDGA.com. We can not only follow along with the scores but also take a look at the whole averages and this came in at 0.61 below par so statistically yes the easiest hole on the course relative to par <laughs> I, I can't help but laugh the fact that he's got that much of a pitch up to the pin <laughs> on this hole is just ridiculous. <laughs> this looks like an assembly line. There's people walking in, pitching, walking out of frame. I mean, I guess it's the birdie factory. Big shout out to Resistance Disc, Jeff Corns and crew. If you use the code DGGUY, any purchase over $30 will get you free shipping. So I appreciate that, Jeff. And 360 feet, 110 meters, one of the most picturesque holes, uh, not only on the course, but I think in all of Arizona from everything I've seen. Just iconic hole playing from up top, plays down over the water. You can also go deep and find out of bounds. 
the line right where the gallery is would be considered out of bounds. It's coming in a little bit hot, but it checks up. And Macbeth's like AB leaking out just a little bit to the left. Macbeth has been leading the tournament as we have just 10 holes left to play. That's a low line and it doesn't skip out of the water. Somewhat surprised to see that by Aaron. Well, for starters, we haven't seen many mistakes, but I also thought we might see some kind of a mid-range. I feel like I've seen him throw zones. And Hamas is in the zone. So you see on the ground that white paint says DZ. That's short for drop zone. He's throwing from here with penalty. So Macbeth just about circles edge, hits the cage. I think back to round number three, and I, I know I extensively talked about it, when he was missing, most of his misses were on the top band. He was hitting high on the cage. That's something to keep in mind. Nice firm stroke there by Barella, and he ties up Paul Macbeth. He officially has a share of the lead. And I'm going to say that's the closest anyone has been score-wise to Paul since he put down the 16 down in the first round and then had a four-stroke lead over that same gentleman in Anthony Barella. So it's taken two and a half rounds, but A.B. knotted up with Macbeth. We head over to hole number nine, the most difficult pull on the course relative to par 482 feet some players will go with the forehand out over the water or possibly a long turnover shot or you may see just a huge hyzer off to the right hand side you need it to check up here if you go over the sidewalk on the right you're out of bounds and of course if you go into the pond you're OB as well Oh, and A.B. looked like he was going to play the high turnover and then have it stall back to the pin, and instead he overturns it early. That's a safe shot by Hamas here. It's so tough for our competitors to think about getting a little bit more aggressive on the forehand shot, because if you don't <laughs> carry it far enough, you're gonna be in a world of hurt and probably out of bounds. And Macbeth playing the flex shot up and over. Oh, and the little skip as it finishes. And that's about as close as you'll find a drive here on hole nine. There was exactly one birdie in the entire field during round number three. And he's on this card. It's Anthony Barella. And Barella trying to go low and underneath the trees and gets caught up. So now he's going to be in threat of getting up and down from there for par. Oh, 
Oh, no. That is worst case scenario for Barella. So two errant approach shots now leaves him at least 50 feet to the pin. And that's incredibly uncommon to see this high of a number for someone who didn't go in the water. That's going to be a real momentum killer for AB. Here's Aaron. Yes. The jumper connects. He goes to 31 under. And Macbeth also connects. So two birdies, again, just one birdie out of more than 100 competitors during round number three. And then today we see two birdies on the lead card. They were joined by about five or six other people. So the birdie a little bit more there, so to speak. I think with the wind being down, that's why we're seeing it, but certainly a bonus. So just like that, Macbeth, who was tied a moment ago, now has a three-shot lead. They have just nine holes left to play. You guys aren't going anywhere because you want to see how this shakes out. We're also seeing a look at Drew Gibson, who had birdied that hole.